Of course, this time of year we must expect the inclement weather will not be cast down by it. Quite. You were right. To talk about the weather is absurd. You do it most agreeably, Mr. Wickham. No, 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 we will change the subject. Cards? But I, I know little of games. And yet I dare say it is my duty to improve myself in these fields, especially in view of my situation in life. Would you come along, Mr. Collins? Is not Miss Elizabeth to play whist too? Oh, Miss Elizabeth is entertaining Mr. Wickham. Our officers are a very creditable gentleman like Sir. But I'm sure Mr. Wickham is quite the best of them all. I knew he would not stay away. Could not. Now, Mr. Collins, do join us at the whist table. Oh, of course, of course. Good evening, good evening. Please accept my apologies. Tell me, how long has Mr. Darcy been staying at Netherfield? I was surprised to see him here. He has large estates in Derbyshire and a clear 10,000 a year. And our society, you would imply, would seem a good deal too dull for him. He is a proud man. So I have noticed. He's been here a month already and is reckoned, alas, a most disagreeable person. That is unusual. The world is mostly blinded by his fortune and consequence and frightened by his high and imposing manner into speaking well of him. You seem to know a great deal about Mr. Darcy, Mr. Wickham. I expect he only discourses on the nature of philosophy. He is interested in books and reading. I know. Mr. Darcy and I are not on friendly terms, I freely admit it. His father was my godfather and bequeathed me a living on his Derbyshire estates so that I could earn my keep as befitted my temperament as a clergyman. But it suited Mr. Darcy to give my living to another. His behavior to myself has been scandalous. But I could forgive him that, were it not that he has disgraced the memory of his good father. Gave your living to another? Why did you not seek legal redress? And there was just such an informality in the terms of the bequest as to give me no hope in law. A man of honor would not have doubted the intention, however... But why? I have a warm, unguarded temper. I may perhaps have spoken my opinion of him, and to him, too freely. I can recall nothing worse. The fact is, we are very different sort of men, and that he hates me. I am very much struck with the style and furniture of this apartment, Mrs. Phillips. I might almost have supposed myself to be in the small breakfast parlor at Lady Catherine de Bourgh's. At Rosings, one of the chimney pieces alone cost 800 pounds. What? Is it my call? I do apologize. Please accept my apologies. Charlotte, Mr. Wickham is above everyone in person, countenance, air. Oh, but Charlotte, what he has told me of Mr. Darcy. I never liked Mr. Darcy. I supposed him to be despising his fellow creatures in general, but did not suspect him capable of injustice, inhumanity. His disposition must be dreadful. What can he have done to merit this? Pray do not consider my loss of the smallest importance. The money is a mere trifle. When persons sit down at a card table, they must take their chance of these things. <laughs> Pray no one must make themselves uneasy on my account. Five shillings? Well, my father's cousin, Mr. Collins. His father made him humble, but lately Lady Catherine de Bourgh has given him a living, which has made him very conceited. That and a weak head. Lady Catherine? But she is Mr. Darcy's aunt. I gather she is remarkable, very sensible and clever. I think that can only be a rumor put about by her nephew. She is arrogant and conceited, dictatorial and insolent. Perhaps Mr. Darcy cannot tell the difference. Or does not wish to. She is, after all, to be his mother-in-law. For it is believed Mr. Darcy is to marry the daughter, Mr. Berg. The two estates would be united. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I was thinking of poor Miss Bingley. Trying so hard, but to no avail. He is self-destined for another. But has failed to mention it. 